Welcome to the Joint Finance Appropriation Committee this morning. Uh, we apologize for the delay. We're in the middle of trying to figure out some things. So uh, let's go ahead and begin, Ms. Einer, if you would call the roll for us. Chairman Grow? Here. Yerke? Here. Burton Shaw? Here. Lent? Here. Cook? Here. Van Orden? Here. Adams? Here. Herndon? Ward Engel King? Here. Just? Representative Horman, Miller, Present. Bundy, yes. Raybold, yes. Furness, yes. Lambert, yes. Tanner, yes. Petsky, yes. Handy, yes. Green. Thank you for your presence here this morning. And we have a quorum from the House and a quorum from the Senate. And uh, at this point, we have several items on the agenda, but we're going to go to ease first and figure out some things. So we shall return. So we are at ease.
Hardware and closed captioning for Idaho in Session is provided by the Idaho Legislature and Idaho Legislative Services Office. Additional funding is provided by the Idaho Public Television Endowment. We're back in order. So let's move ahead first on our agenda. We have Mr. Tatro, Office of Drug Policy. Go ahead, please. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. The first budget before you is for the Office of Drug Policy. Information on the Office of Drug Policy can be found in your budget book on 6-65. And for a quick reminder, the Office of Drug Policy was created by the legislature in 2007 and placed under the Office of the Governor to address Idaho's substance use and misuse policy and prevention efforts. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Tatro. Do we have any questions for our analyst? If not, then we're open for motions. Whoever would like to make a motion, go ahead, please. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Cook. Uh, for a motion. Go for it. Thank you, sir. Uh, for the Office of Drug Policy, beginning with fiscal year 2025 base, reduce $2,000 for benefit costs and 200 for statewide cost allocation. Excuse, excuse me, Senator Cook. Can you tell us which, we have two motion possibilities here. Would you tell us which one you're on, please? It's the Office of Drug Policy 1. One, thank you. Would you like me to start over? Uh, if you choose, your choice. All right, thank you. For the Office of Drug Policy, beginning with the fiscal year 2025 base, reduce $2,000 for benefit costs and $200 for statewide cost allocation. Then add $14,500 for change in employee compensation and $100,000 for community models. For fiscal year 2025, I move for the Office of Drug Policy $376,200 from the general fund, $124,500 from dedicated funds, and $4,500,000 from federal funds for a total of $5,700,000 and a cap the full and cap the full time equivalent positions at six. Thank you. I appreciate that motion. Is there a second? Uh, second by Representative Petsky. Would you like to speak further to your motion? Yes, I would. Thank you. This motion represents a cup a complete maintenance budget for fiscal year 25 based on the definition provided in the budget development manual developed under the requirements of Chapter 35, Title 67, Idaho Code, that outlines the state budget process. This definition reflects the adjustments needed to maintain the current state of operations and level of service for each program, which includes the committee's recommended 3% CEC for permanent employees. Line item two supports existing operations and services provided per six Idaho Code 67-821, which designates the office to oversee and execute the coordination of all drug and substance abuse programs within the state of Idaho. The proposed comp competitive grants come from the state directed opioid settlement fund and are intended to provide competitive grants to public and nonprofit entities 
that provide community-based substance use prevention models for Idaho youth. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Cook. Uh, do we have any other motions? For a motion, Mr. Chair. Representative Tanner, go ahead, please. Uh, beginning with FY 2025, JFAX maintenance budget and $9,700 for 2% CEC. I move an additional $4,900 from the general fund and $4,800 from federal funds for a total of $9,700. This brings the total FY 2025 original appropriation for the drug policy to $376,200 from the general fund. 24,500 from dedicated funds and 4,500,000 from federal funds for a total of 4,900,700 and caps of <clears throat> and a cap of six uh, full time equivalent positions. Thank you. We have a motion on the floor, an alternate motion. Is there a second? Second. A couple of seconds. Uh, we'll take uh, Senator Bjerke as a second. Uh, would uh, you like to speak further to your motion, Representative Tanner? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This motion accounts for the CEC amount approved from JHFACT on 2 1 2024 and for the reappropriation of ARPA funds to, the, uh, to complete that grant. Um, as well as, I do want to make sure that we, uh, we are pointing out that this actually is the one that starts with the maintenance budget itself uh, and not going back to the existing base. So, this would follow the existing maintenance budget that was actually passed um, this committee are already that is actually currently on between the House or, or the Senate floors. Thank you. Uh, let's, is there a, an alternate substitute motion? There ain't none. Uh, we deal with the substitute motion first, so uh, uh, we're open for any debate discussion on the substitute motion. No further questions. Let's go ahead then, and when we're ready, Mr. Bybee, we're ready to roll. Figueredo, are you ready? Just about. All right. Senator Grow? Uh, aye. Yerke? Aye. Burton Shaw? Aye. Lent? Aye. Cook? Van Orden, Adams, Aye. Uh, Herndon, Aye. Ward Engel King, Yay. Just, Aye. Representative Miller, Aye. Bundy, Raybold, Furness, Lambert, Aye. Tanner, Aye. Petsky, Aye. Handy. Aye. Thank you. Would anyone like to change his or her vote? Seeing no changes, we have for the uh, substitute motion on the Senate, we have four ayes, six nays, zero absent and excused. And on the House side, we have three ayes, five nays, two absent and excused. Uh, for a total of seven ayes, 11 nays, two absent and excused. Therefore, the motion has failed. And we move back to the original motion. Uh, any more debate on the original motion? Hearing none, Ms. Figueredo, if you'll call the roll for us on that one, please. Senator Grow. Aye. Bierke. Excuse me, I meant nay. Go ahead, nay. Senator Bierke. Nay. Burton Shaw. Aye. Lent. Aye. Cook. Aye. Van Orden. Adams, Aye. Herndon, Aye. Ward Engel King, Aye. Just, Representative Miller, Aye. Bundy, Aye. Raybold, Aye. Furness, Aye. Lambert, Aye. Tanner, Aye. Petsky, Aye. Handy. Thank you. Would anyone like to change his or her vote on this one? Hearing none, we have on the, for the original motion, we have for the Senate, six ayes, four nays, zero absent and excused. 
And for the house, we have five eyes, three, three nays, two absent and excused. So having uh, the majority on both sides for a total of 11 eyes, seven nays, two absent and excused, therefore this motion is passed and we'll go forward with the due pass recommendation. Thank you. Next, uh, next topic, you're still up, uh, Rep. Mr. Tatro. <laughs> Mr. Chair, Chairman. Oh, yes, Senator Warding, okay, go ahead. I think there's language oh, on this. Excuse me, thank you. We do have language. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I was getting there. It takes a second to switch between the ballot and the analyst. I understand, board. thank you. Thank you, Senator. Um, yes, Mr. Chairman, for members of the committee, there are two sections of language uh, for the Office of Drug Policy being recommended by the committee. The first is for reappropriation authority to finish out the ARPA funds that were provided by the committee just a couple years ago. The amount identified by the Office of Drug Policy for next year will be $775,100. And the second is the accountability reports to be included within this agency's appropriation bill. Thank you. Any questions on the language? Hearing none, do we have a motion to accept the language? Senator Cook. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I request unanimous consent to accept the language, language as shown on the screen. We have a unanimous consent request. Anyone uh, disagreeing with that? Hearing none, that request has been accepted and the language will accompany the bill as it goes forward with a due pass recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Tatro. Thank you, Mr. Ready. Chairman. The next budget before you is for the Commission for Libraries. Information can be found in your budget book on 5-73. Uh, as a reminder to the committee, the Commission for Libraries assists in statewide library development and providing continuing education and consulting services to the library community. They're, they assist over 147 public libraries, including schools. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Tetro. Any questions for our analyst? Hearing none, do we have any motions? Uh, Representative Furness. For a go motion. Ahead. Go ahead, motions in order. <clears throat> for the Idaho Commission of Libraries beginning in fiscal year 2025 base, reduce 11,400 for the benefit costs, add 83,700 for statewide cost allocation, 78,700 for change in employee compensation, and 750,000 for the digital access for all Idahoans grant. I move for FY 2025 for the Idaho Commission of Libraries, $4,724,724,100 from the general fund, 70,000 from the dedicated funds, Two, and 2,624,900 from federal funds for a total of 7,419,000 and cap the full-time equivalent positions at 35.5. Thank you, appreciate that. We have the motion, we have a second. Second by Senator Cook. Uh, would you like to speak further to your motion? Okay, do we have an alternative motion? Hearing none. Senator, oh, go ahead. I just want to clarify because this does say uh, Commission of Libraries two, but for some reason I'm missing the Commission of Libraries one. Any comment, uh, Representative Belder? Did you have a commission on Libraries number one? Mr. Chairman, you're not missing a motion. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tate. That's just how they were prepared at a time. These are the motions that were brought forth by committee members to be introduced today. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you for the question. There's our answer. All right, let's go ahead then. When you're ready, Ms. Figueredo, let's call the roll, please. Senator Grow. Aye. Bierke. Aye. Oh. Mr. Chairman, we just need to wait for the ballot to be on the screen. Whoop. Yes, let's do. It's about a 12 second delay.
When you're ready, please, please start over when you're ready. Senator Grove. Nay. Bierke. Burton Shaw. Lent. Cook. Van Orden. Adams. Herndon. Ward Ingle King. Just. Representative Miller. Bundy. Raybold. Furness. Lambert. Tanner. Petsky. Handy. Thank you. Would anyone like to change his or her vote? Uh, Senator Bierke. Yes, I'd like to change my vote to nay. Okay, Senator, Senator Bierke changes his vote to nay. Anyone else? Hearing none, uh, we have a total of, for the Senate, six ayes, four nays, zero absent and excused. For the House, five ayes, three nays, two absent and excused. For a grand total of 11 ayes, seven nays, two absent and excused. Therefore, uh, with majority in favor, this passes. And we'll go to the floor with a do pass recommendation. Thank you. Let's go to the next one. Mr. Chairman, there is language with oh, the budget. Thank you for that. Yes, let's go through the language. Our motion maker was Furness. Representative Furness, please walk us through the language. Or Mr. Tate or whoever would like to. He is pointing at you, my friend, All Mr. Right. Tatro. All right, Mr. Chairman, there are four sections. The first two pertain to reappropriation authority. The first section shown on the screen is for library projects. This would be for reappropriation from the ARPA Capital Projects Fund of $1.9 million uh, for projects that were approved or funding that was approved by this committee last session. The second section pertains to the digital access capacity reappropriation and the digital access for all Idahoans. This amount would be to not exceed 1.75 million. The third section pertains to telehealth facilities. Uh, this was something that was added by the committee last session, directing the use of the ARPA capital project fund monies to be used in compliance with Idaho code. And finally, the accountability reports to be included in this appropriation bill as well. Thank you. So uh, do we have a motion on the language? Representative Furness. Thank you. I request unanimous consent to accept the language as shown on the screen. We have a unanimous consent request. Any objections? Hearing none, the language is accepted and we'll go forward with the bill as it goes forward with the due pass recommendation. Thank you. Next, Mr. Tatro. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The next budget before you is for the Idaho State Historical Society. Information on this agency can be found on 5-67 of your budget book. <clears throat> As a reminder to the committee, the State Historical Society is a system of cultural and historic resources that include the Idaho State Museum, the State Archives, the State Historic Preservation Office, or SHPO, and other historic site programs. The agency was established in 1907 and is, and is organized under the Department of Self-Governing Agencies. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Tatro. Any questions for our analyst? Seeing, seeing none, uh, do we have uh, a motion then on this? For a motion. For a motion. Uh, Senator Burtonshaw. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <clears throat> for the Idaho State Historical Society, beginning with fiscal year 2025 base, reduce 29200 for benefit costs then add 70,500 for replacement items, 126,500 for statewide cost allocations, 221,100 for change in employee compensation, two FTP and 133,600 for the old penitentiary staff, 101,200 for an administrative support manager and remove one FTP and a net 70,000 from OITS consolidation. I move for fiscal year 2025 from the Idaho State Historical Society 4,628,900 from the general fund, 3,529,700 from dedicated funds, and 2,311,400 from federal funds 
for a total of 10,470,000 and cap full-time equivalent positions at 59. Thank you, Senator. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second by Representative Bundy. Uh, would you like to speak further to your motion? You, you no, right? not at this time. Thank you, Senator. Uh, do we have any alternative motions? Hearing none, uh, let's go ahead whenever you are ready. Is there any further debate on the motion? Okay, that gave you time to get your screen going. When it pops up, we will begin to vote. <clears throat> Senator Groh. Nay. Bierke. Nay. Burton Shaw. Aye. Lent. Aye. Cook. Aye. Van Orden. Aye. Adams. Nay. Herndon. Nay. Ward Ingle King. <laughs> Just. Representative Miller. Aye. Bundy. Raybold, Aye. Furness, Aye. Lambert, Aye. Tanner, Aye. Petsky, Candy. Thank you. Would anyone like to change his or her vote? Hearing none, we have on the Senate six ayes, four nays, zero absent and excused. On the House, five ayes, three nays, two absent and excused. A grand total of 11 ayes, 7 nays, 2 absent and excused. Therefore, with the majority, it has passed. And we'll go forward with the due, a due pass recommendation. And we'll add the language that Mr. Tatro is going to help us with right now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It will be on the screen in just a second. This is just the uh, standard accountability report language to be added to this appropriation bill. Thank you. Uh, do we have a motion on the language? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Burtonshaw. I request unanimous consent to accept the language as shown on the screen. Thank you. We have a unanimous consent request. Uh, any objections? Hearing none, the language is accepted and will accompany the bill with the due pass recommendation. Thank you very much. Let's go to the next one, Mr. Tatro. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The next budget before you is the Public Charter School Commission. As a reminder to the committee, they did not have a budget hearing as they have a pure maintenance budget, no additional requests other than the standard adjustments. Information on the Charter School Commission can be found on 1-139 of your budget book. And as a reminder, they are Idaho's state level charter school authorizing entity pursuant to section 3352.13 Idaho code. Members consist of seven members appointed by the governor subject to consent of the Senate. And the commissioners appoint the director whose authority includes the ability to hire staff and enforce applicable statutes. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Tatro. Any questions for our analyst? Hearing none, uh, do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman. Senator Van Orden. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for a motion. Motion's in order. For the Charter School Commission, beginning with the FY 2025 base, reduce $3,700 for benefit costs and $13,600 for statewide alloc cost allocation. Then add $13,300 for the 3% change in employee compensation. I move for, 20, for fiscal year 2025 for the Charter School Commission, $1,093. One one hundred ninety-three thousand from the general fund, and five hundred and thirty-one thousand nine hundred from dedicated funds, for a total of seven hundred and twenty-four thousand nine hundred, and cap the full-time equivalent positions at five. Thank you, Senator. Do we we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second by I think I heard a Representative Raybold. For the second, uh, would you like to speak further to your motion? No, I wouldn't. Okay. Uh, are there any alternative motions? Hearing none, let's go ahead when you are ready to get the screen up and ready, and we'll vote. <clears throat> Senator Groh? Nay. Bierke? Nay. Burton Shaw? Lent. 
Cook. Van Orden. Adams. Herndon. Ward Inkle King. Just. Representative Miller. Bundy. Raybold. Furnace. Lambert. Tanner. Petsky. Handy. Thank you. Would anyone like to change his or her vote? Hearing no changes, we have for the Senate six ayes, four nays, zero absent and excused. For the House, five ayes, three nays, two absent and excused. For a grand total of 11 ayes, seven nays, two absent and excused. Therefore, the majority having voted in the affirmative, this will go forward with a due pass recommendation. Do we have language in addition to this one? Yes, Mr. Chairman. It is the standard accountability language. All right. And it's shown on the screen. Thank you. Do we have a, any requests regarding the language? Mr. Chairman. Senator Van Orden. Thank you. I request unanimous consent to approve the language as shown on the screen. We have a unanimous consent request. Is there any objection? Hearing none, that language is accepted. We'll go forward with the bill, with the due pass recommendation. Thank you. Next, Mr. Tatro, are you still up? Uh, no, nope. Mr. Chairman, Mr. I believe I am done. Thank you, Mr. Tatro, for your work. Ms. Jessup, would you come forward, please? Please identify yourself for the record and proceed. Mr. Chairman, my name is Janet Jessup. I'm a budget and policy analyst with Legislative Services. The next budget on your agenda is for the Department of Agriculture. The Department of Agriculture is one of the state's 20 executive departments and um, is over various aspects of agricultural and, and the agricultural economy within the state. Mr. Chair, I'm available for questions. Thank you, Ms. Jessup. Any questions for our analyst? Hearing none, do we have any motions? Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, I heard a voice in the, who's talking? Uh, Senator Burton Shog, go ahead. Okay, for motion. Motion's in order. Department of Agriculture, beginning with fiscal year 2025 base, include the following items as part of the JFAC maintenance budget. Reduce 131,700 from benefit costs add 1,381,700 for replacement items, add 38,100 for statewide cost allocation, add 515,100 for change in employee compensation. Also include one FTP and 215,000 for a veterinarian in Eastern Idaho two FTP and 284,600 for dairy inspectors, one FTP and 88,800 for seed lab personnel, 67,500 to enhance the Idaho preferred program, 1,500,000 to build storage facilities, 60,000 to provide international trade support with Japan, 6,184,900 for the Resilient Food Systems Program, 94,500 to, pro to provide CEC for fruit and vegetable inspectors, 5,700 for the Hun Honey Commission, 11,569,900 for Quagga Muscle Resources, and transfer five million from the general fund to the invasive species fund. 
for fiscal year 2025, I move 15 million 11,800 from the general fund, 38 million 228,800 from dedicated funds, and 13 million 706,800 from federal funds for a total of 66 million 947,400 and cap the full-time equivalent positions at 231. Thank you, Senator Burtonshaw. We have a motion and a second was from Representative Bundy. Thank you for that. Uh, would either of you like to speak further to your motion? No, not at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have any alternate motions? For a motion. Uh, motions in order? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the Department of Agriculture, beginning with the fiscal year 2025 JFAC maintenance budget, add $348,300 for the 2% CEC, also add one FTP and $215,000 for a veterinarian in Eastern Idaho, two FTP and $284,600 for dairy inspectors, one FTP and $88,800 for seed lab personnel, $67,500 to enhance the Idaho Preferred Program, $1,500,000 to build a storage facility, $60,000 to provide international trade support with Japan, $6,184,900 for the Resilient Food Systems Grant, $94,500 to provide CEC for fruit and vegetable inspectors, $5,700 for the Honey Commission, $11,569,900 for the Quagga Muscle Resources, and transfer $5 million from the General Fund to the Invasive Species Fund, and $1,381,700 for replacement items. I move an additional $1,963,500 from the General Fund, $8,621,800 from dedicated funds, $6,215,600 from federal funds for a total of $16,800,900 and an additional full-time equivalent positions of six. That brings the fiscal year 2025 total appropriation for the Department of Agriculture to $15,011,800 from the general fund. $38,228,800 from dedicated funds, $13,706,800 from federal funds for a total of $66,947,400 and a cap full-time equivalent positions at 231. Thank you. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second by Senator Bjerke. Would either of you like to speak further to your motion? No, I believe this has been discussed. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Representative Miller. Uh, do we have uh, any more motions? Hearing none, uh, you were able to catch up on the screen with everything. Ms. Jessup, thank you for all your good work there. Uh, let's go ahead and vote on this alternate or on this substitute motion. Ms. Figueredo, when you are ready, call the roll, please. That's my fault, Mr. Chair. We'll get there in just a minute. Senator Grow. Now we're on the screen. I. Bierke. Aye. Burton Shaw. Aye. Lent. Aye. Cook. Van Orden. Aye. Adams. Aye. Herndon. Aye. Ward Ingle King. Yay. Just. Representative Miller. Aye. Bundy. Aye. Raybold. Furness. Lambert. Tanner. Aye. Petsky. Aye. Handy. Thank you for your votes. Would anyone like to change his or her vote? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Excuse me. Um, 
I, I believe um, Representative Green's substitute is here. Did she step out? Oh, okay, thank you, sorry. Thank you for the comment. Okay, we have our vote on the substitute motion. We have uh, for the Senate, four ayes, six nays, zero absent and excused. For the House, three ayes, five nays, two absent and excused. For a grand total of seven ayes, 11 nays, two absent and excused. Therefore, this motion, substitute motion has failed. So now we go to the original motion. Would you like okay. to call? What? I was hearing a comment, I thought, somewhere. Let's go ahead and uh, when you're ready then on the original motion. Ms. Jessup is figuring out something. Oh. We okay? okay? We're fine. We're fine. Okay. On the original motion, uh, Ms. Figueredo, would you please call the roll? Senator Grove? Nay. Bierke? Nay. Burton Shaw? Aye. Lent? Aye. Cook? Van Orden. Aye. Adams. Aye. Herndon. Aye. Ward Ingle King. Aye. Just. Representative Miller. Aye. Bundy. Aye. Raybold. Aye. Furness. Lambert. Aye. Tanner. Petsky. Aye. Handy. Thank you. Would anyone like to change his or her vote? Hearing no changes, we have for the Senate. We had for the Senate. It disappeared. Oh. It is returning to the screen, hopefully. My apologies, Mr. Chairman. Oh, no problem. Let us know when. Uh, when I believe the ballots are on the screen, Mr. Chairman. I do not have it on my screen yet. For some reason not on my screen, Mr. Uh, does everybody have it on? Does anyone do, does not have it on your screen? I do not have it on my screen, and up here we don't have it on our screen. For some reason. Okay, we're going to go at ease so we can figure out the screen situation. We are at ease. Let's just stay here. This should be quick. Unless you need to leave. <laughs> okay, uh, Janie, do we have her name for voting? As well. Okay. Because if none of us, I yeah, know, I get it. Go on. I need to change. That was weird because those two have it over there. Oh, not, not now. Excuse me for yes. a second, Chairman. Sorry. Get underneath this work. No pressure, Shane. <laughs> Wipe the rest of them out. Wipe the rest of them out now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, now we're on. Okay, we're coming back. Thank you, right. Shane. Shane. About that, Thanks, Keith. No problem. He hey, he lost, he left the tip for us here, Shane. <laughs> okay, we are back in session, we, and so we are ready to read the results of that vote on the original motion. We have six for the, for the Senate, six ayes, four nays, zero absent and excused for the House, five ayes, three nays, two absent and excused for a grand total of 11 ayes, seven nays, two absent and excused. With that, the motion passes and we'll go forward with a do pass recommendation. And do we have language, Ms. Jessup? 
Mr. Chairman, associated with this budget, we do have language. It's currently on the screen, watercraft inspection for the watercraft inspection program, and also the um, language for accountability reports that you have seen this morning. Thank you. Any, do we have a motion on the language? Mr. Chairman, it's not on our screens. Not on our screens. Thank you for that. At least we got our screen back up here, so that was good. But we just lost it again. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate um, your grace. Okay. We are very patient. No problem, Mr. Jessup. It's coming back. Okay, there it is. Thank you, Senator Burch. I appreciate that. I, hey. requ I request uh, unanimous consent to accept the language as shown on the screen. Thank you. We have a unanimous consent request. Any objection? Hearing no objections, the language will accompany the bill with the new pass recommendation. Thank you very much. Next up. Mr. Chairman, also associated with the Department of Agriculture, we have a deficiency warrant for exotic species. Um, this, um, this deficiency warrant is referenced on page 5-9 of your legislative budget book and relates to funds that were expended for the control of exotic species, including Japanese beetles, Mormon crickets, and other exotic pests. The agency has the ability to spend, the, spend into the against the general fund for these purposes as provided in code. Um, and I would stand for questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, any questions on this supplemental appropriation request that we have? Ms. Raybould. Mr. Chairman, for a motion. Motion's in order. I move for fiscal year 2024 for the Department of Agriculture and the Plant Industries Program, a one-time appropriation and transfer of 627 thousand nine hundred dollars from the general fund to the continuously appropriated pest control deficiency fund thank you for that motion uh, do we have a sec second uh, second from senator van burton shaw would either of you like to speak to your motion okay uh with that then uh no no discussion so we need to vote on the supplemental and we'll give Ms. Figueredo, time to bring that up and then call the roll when you're ready. Um, Mr. Chairman, just a moment. Yes. This is our new technology that's a little slower than our old technology, but we still like it. We hope. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <clears throat> Senator Groh? Aye. Bierke? Burton Shaw? Aye. Lent? Aye. Cook? Van Orden? Aye. Adams? Aye. Herndon? Aye. Ward Ingle King? Aye. Just? Miller, Aye. excuse me, <laughs> Representative Miller. Bundy. Aye. Raybold. Aye. Furness. Aye. Lambert. Aye. Tanner. Aye. Petsky. Aye. Handy. Aye. Green. Aye. Thank you for your votes. Uh, would anyone like to change his or her vote? Seeing none, we have for the Senate 10 ayes, 0 nays, 0 absent, and excused for the House 9 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent, and excused for a grand total of 19 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent, and excused. Therefore, this motion, the supplemental appropriation motion, has passed and will go forward with the due pass recommendation. But we don't have any additional language on this, Ms. Jessup, is that correct? No additional language? No, sir. So this is the entirety. So that is taken care of. Let's move to your next item then, Ms. Jessup. Mr. Chairman, the next, um, the next agenda item today is the Soil and Water Conservation Commission. Soil and Water Conservation Commission is a budgeted division of the Department of Agriculture, which, as I stated previously, is one of the state's um, 20 executive programs. Mr. Chairman, the um, request, Governor's recommendation, is on the screen. Mr. Chairman, I would stand for questions. 
Thank you. Any questions for our analyst? Hearing none, do we have any motions? For a motion. Motions in order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the Soil and Water Conservation Commission, beginning with the fiscal year 2025 JFAC maintenance budget, add $27,800 for the 2% CEC, add $75,400 to increase soil and water district distributions, increase, and $1 million for the Water Quality Program for Agriculture. I move an additional $1,099,700 from the general fund and $3,500 from dedicated funds for a total of $1,103,200. This brings the fiscal year 2025 total appropriation for the Soil and Water Conservation Commission of $4,592,200 from the general fund. $424,400 from dedicated funds for a total of $5,016,600 and a cap of 17.75 full-time equivalent. Uh, just a comment there. Equivalent FTPs, or, <clears throat> that just kind of ends there, Ms. Jessup, uh, full-time equivalent. Um, positions. Positions, okay. Would Positions. You Thank you. Thank you. All right, we need to get the whole story in there. Thank you for the motion. We have a second. We have a motion on the floor with a second. Would either of you like to speak further to your motion? No, thank you. Okay. Do we have uh, a, a substitute motion? Mr. Chairman. Chairman, for the Soil and Water Conservation Commission, Commission beginning with fiscal year 2025 base include the following items as part of the JFAC maintenance budget. Reduce 6,900 from benefit costs, reduce 5,800 for statewide cost allocation, add 41,700 for change in employee compensation, also add 75,400 to increase the distribution for water and soil districts. Add two million for, for the water quality program for agriculture. For fiscal year 2025, I move 4,592,200 from the general fund, 424,400 from dedicated funds for a total of 5,016,600 and cap full-time equivalent positions at 17.75. Thank you, Senator Burtonshaw. Do we have, we have a motion, do we have a second? Second by Representative Bundy. Would either of you like to speak further to your motion? No, thank you. Okay, so we have the substitute motion. Is there a, an, an amended or an alternate substitute motion? Hearing none, so let's deal with the Substitute motion then, if we could, we'll give you time to bring all that up on the screen, Ms. Jessup. Thank you for your help with this. When it shows up, we'll let Ms. Figueredo call the roll. Senator Grow. Nay. Bierke. Nay. Burton Shaw. Aye. Lent. Aye. Cook. Aye. Van Orden. Adams, Aye. Herndon, Aye. Ward Ingle King, Aye. Just, Representative Miller, Aye. Bundy, Aye. Raybold, Aye. Furness, Aye. Lambert, Aye. Tanner, Aye. Petsky, Aye. Handy, Aye. Green. Aye. Thank you. Would anyone like to change his or her vote? Hearing none, we have for the Senate, six ayes, four nays, zero absent and excused. For the House, uh, six ayes, three nays, one absent and excused. For a total of 12 ayes, seven nays, one absent and excused. So uh, with the majority in favor, the motion passes and we'll go forward with a do pass recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, there is language associated with this motion. Thank you. Please bring up our language and uh, go ahead and explain it to us, please. 
Mr. Chairman, there are four distinct pieces of, pieces of language. The first um, is standard language that has um, historically been present in this budget, requiring um, a distribution distribution methodology for the Soil and Water Conservation Commission. The second um, directs the regard, directs the agency regarding the million dollars that was included in the motion to be used for the water quality program for agriculture. The third piece of language provides reappropriation authority for that program um, for the current year into 2025. And the fourth is the accountability language that you have seen previously this morning. Thank you, Mr. Jessup. We have the uh, language on the screen. Screen, do we have a motion? For motion, Mr. Chairman. The Birdshaw. <clears throat> I request unanimous consent to accept the language as shown on the screen. We have unanimous consent request. Uh, any objections? Hearing none, that language will accompany the bill and go forward with a new pass recommendation. Thank you. Next, Ms. Jessup. Mr. Chairman, the next uh, um, budget on the agenda is for the Office of Species Conservation. The Office of Species Conservation can be found in your legislative budget book on 6-127. It is part of the general government section. Um, Mr. Chairman, the, off the Office of Species Conservation is included within the Office of the Governor, and I would stand for questions. Thank you, Ms. Jessup. Any questions for our analyst? Hearing none, uh, do we have any motions on this bill? For a motion. For a motion, motions in order. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the Office of Species Conservation, beginning with fiscal year 2025, JFAC maintenance budget add $27,100 for the 2% CEC. Add one FTP and $80,900 for a fiscal staff member and $5,000 for the agency to receive grant funds. I move an additional $95,800 from the general fund, $5,000 from the dedicated funds, $12,200 from federal funds for a total of $113,000 and an additional full-time equivalent position of one. This brings the fiscal year 2025 total appropriation for the Office of Species Conservation of $1,766,500 from the general fund, $20,000 from dedicated funds, and $18,104,500 from federal funds for a total of $19,891,000 and a cap of 16 full-time equivalent positions. Thank you. We have a motion from Representative Miller. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Senator Bjerke. Would either of you like to speak further to your motion? No, thank you, Mr. Okay. Do we have a substitute motion? For motion. Uh, Representative Furness, thank you. Go ahead, please. For the Office of Species Conservation, beginning with FY 2025 base, including the following items as part of the JFAC maintenance, reduce 3,500 for benefit cost, add 9,300 for statewide cost allocation, and 40,700 for change in employee compensation. Add one FTP and 80,900 for a new fiscal staff member. And add 5,000 for the agency to receive grant funds. For FY 2025, I move 1,766,500 from the general fund, 20,000 from dedicated funds, and 18,104,500 from federal funds for a total of 19,891,000 and cap full-time equivalent positions at 16. Thank you, we have a motion for, by Representative Furness. Do we have a second? Second by Senator Lent, thank you. Uh, would either of you like to speak further to your motion? Not at this time. Thank you. Uh, do we have any uh, alternate uh, substitute motions? Hearing none, Ms. Figueredo, when you are ready, when you're ready, we will call, have you call a roll on the substitute motion. Mr. Chairman, just a moment, please. Fine. We understand, Ms. Jessup, whatever time is necessary.
<clears throat> Senator Grow. Nay. Bierke. Nay. Burton Shaw. Aye. Lent. Aye. Cook. Aye. Van Orden. Aye. Adams. Nay. Herndon. Nay. Ward Engel King. Aye. Just. Aye. Representative Miller. Nay. Bundy. Raybold. Furnace. Lambert. Tanner. Petsky. Handy. Aye. Green. Aye. Thank you. Would anyone like to change his or her vote? Hearing no changes, we have for on the substitute motion. We have for the Senate, six ayes, four nays, zero absent and excused. For the House, six ayes, three nays, one absent and excused. For a grand total of 12 ayes, seven nays, one absent and excused. Uh, therefore, the majority voting in favor, the substitute motion passes and we'll go forward with the due pass recommendation. Do we have any language, Ms. Jessup? Mr. Chair, there's one piece of language that is associated with this motion. It'll be coming up on your screen very shortly. Thank you. And it is related to the accountability reports language that you have seen this morning. Language is now on the, on the screen. Do we have a motion regarding the language? For motion. Motion's in order. I request unanimous consent to accept the language as shown on the screen. Thank you. We have a unanimous consent request. Any objections? Hearing none, that language will accompany the bill and go, they'll all go forward with the due pass recommendation. Thank you. Next, Ms. Jessup. Mr. Chairman, next on um, line I on <laughs> Item eight on the agenda this morning is the budget for the Office of Information Technology Services. This budget is located on um, page 6-95 of your legislative budget book in the general government section. It is included under the Office of the Governor. Mr. Chairman, I would stand for questions at this time. Thank you, Ms. Jessup. Uh, any questions for our analyst? Hearing none. Uh, do we have any motions? For a motion, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Pesky, motions in order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the Office of Information Technology Services, beginning with the FY 2025 base, include the following items as part of the JFAC maintenance budget. Reduce $33,500 for benefit costs. Reduce $172,800 for statewide cost allocation. And add $495,500 for change in employee compensation. Also include $539,900 for IT security equipment, $328,100 for network equipment and services, $986,000 for IT infrastructure, $76,400 for IT architecture and GIS, $30,000 for service vehicle leases, $1,040,200 for one-time infrastructure replacement, $1,500,000 for community engagement, and 45 FTP and $5,642,100 for IT consolidation. For FY 2025, I've moved $2,506,000 from the general fund and $32,154,600 from dedicated funds for a total of $34,660,600 and kept full-time equivalent positions at 221. Thank you, Representative Petsky has given us a motion. We have a second. Second by Senator Cook. Either of you like to speak to your motion? Uh, just briefly, Mr. Chairman, I would just say that this motion represents a complete maintenance budget for the FY25 uh, based on definition provided by the budget development manual. Uh, this motion includes adjustments needed to maintain the current state of operations and level of service for each program as uh, required in Idaho Code Section 67 827A. Uh, and I'll also note that we uh, made one of these appropriations one time per the discussions in the work group so that we could continue to review these as a committee. Thank you, Representative Petsky. Appreciate the comment. Any other comments? Hearing none, do we have an alternate or substitute motion? Hearing none, uh, let's go ahead and vote on this motion. When it comes on the screen, Please proceed, Ms. Figueredo. <clears throat> Senator Grow. Nay. Bierke. Nay. Burton Shaw. Aye. Lent. Aye. Cook. Aye. 
Van Orden. Adams. Herndon. Ward Ingle King. Just. Representative Miller. Bundy. Raybold. Furness. Lambert. Tanner. Petsky. Handy. Green. Thank you for your votes. Would anyone like to change his or her vote? Hearing none, we have on the screen for the Senate, uh, six ayes, four nays, zero absent and excused. For the House, six ayes, three nays, one absent and excused. For a grand total of 12 ayes, seven nays, one absent and excused. Therefore, the majority having voted in the affirmative, this motion will go forward as a bill with a due pass recommendation to the floors. Ms. Jessup, do we have language here to add, please? Mr. Chairman, there's only one piece of language associated with this budget. It's on the screen, and it is the accountability report language that you have seen previously. Okay, as soon as it shows on the screen, there we go. Okay, do we have any motions on the language? Representative Petsky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I request unanimous consent to accept the language as shown on the screen. We have a unanimous consent request. Is there any objection? Hearing none, let's uh, send that forward then with the bill, with the due pass recommendation. Thank you. Ms. Jessup, that concludes your, your piece. Let's move then to Ms. Olivet. Thank you for your work, Ms. Jessup. Appreciate it. Uh, when you're settled in, please identify yourself for the record and proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Office of Energy and Mineral Resources advises the governor and the legislature on energy and mineral resources within the state and can be found on page 6-71 of your legislative budget book. That's it? And that, that's it. That concludes <laughs> okay. my remarks. Thank, Thank you. you, Ms. Livett. Uh, any questions for analysts? Uh, Senator Herndon. Uh, this is for a motion, Mr. Chairman. For a motion. Motion's in order. Mr. Chairman, beginning for the Office of Energy and Mineral Resources, beginning with the fiscal year 2025 JFAC maintenance budget, add $19,900 for the additional 2% CEC and add $4,400,000 for electric grid modernization. For fiscal year 2025, I move an additional $8,600 from dedicated funds and $4,411,300 from federal funds for a total of $4,419,900. This brings the total fiscal year 2025 appropriation for the Office of Energy and Mineral Resources to $1,079,000 from dedicated funds and $11,587,500 from federal funds for a total of $12,666,500 and a cap of 11 full-time equivalent positions. Thank you, Senator Herndon has given us a motion. Do we have a second? Second by uh, Representative Lambert. Either of you would like to speak further to your motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this motion provides the remaining 2% CEC needed as a result of the committee's action on CEC on February 1st and grants to, and grants to modernize the electric grid, which will be awarded to Idaho grid operators, transmission owners and operators, di distribution providers and other entities to make investments to harden the electric grid, enhance resiliency, prevent wildfires and prevent electricity outages. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any substitute motions? Mr. Chairman. Uh, who is Mr. It? Over here. Over where? Wrong way. Just say who it is. <laughs> Sorry about that. Representative Petsky over here. <laughs> Thank you. Representative Pens Petsky, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for a substitute motion, I, for the Office of Energy and Mineral Resources, beginning with the FY 2025 base, include the following items as part of the budget. 
remove $2,900 for benefit costs, add $13,600 for statewide cost allocation, and add $29,800 for change in employee compensation. Also include $4,400,000 for electric grid modernization. For FY 2025, I move $1,079,000 from dedicated funds and $11,587,500 from federal funds for a total of $12,666,500 and cap full-time equivalent positions at 11. Thank you, Representative Petsky. We have a motion by him. Do we have a second? Second by Senator Lynn. Thank you. Anybody like to speak for the motion? Uh, just briefly, Mr. Chairman. What? Uh, I would just add that we included the electric grid modernization program because it is a continuation of an existing program that they're already granting funds for. Thank you. Appreciate that comment. Any further comments? Hearing none, let's go ahead and when you get it on the screen, we'll call the roll, Ms. Figueredo. Senator Groh. Hey, let me clarify. This is a roll on the substitute motion, correct? Uh, correct, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Nay. Yerke. Nay. Burton Shaw. Aye. Lent. Aye. Cook. Aye. Van Orden. Adams. Nay. Herndon. Nay. Ward Ingle King. Aye. Just. Representative Miller. Nay. Bundy. Aye. Raybold. Aye. Furness. Lambert. Nay. Tanner. Nay. Petsky. Aye. Handy. Aye. Green. Thank you. Would anyone like to change his or her vote? Hearing none, we have on the screen for the Senate. Six ayes, four nays. Zero absent and excused <coughs> for the House. Six ayes, three nays, one absent and excused for grand total of 12 ayes, seven nays, one absent and excused. Therefore, with the majority having voted in the affirmative, the substitute motion passes and will go forward to the floors with a due pass recommendation. Do we have language? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, we do have language. Go ahead, please. Go ahead, please. All right. Uh, the language shown on the screen provides the Office of Energy and Mineral Resources reappropriation authority for um, <clears throat> its state energy resiliency grant program. The second section of language is the familiar accountability reports language that is being included in all budget bills. Thank you. We have language on the screen. Do we have a motion on the language? Representative Petsky. I request unanimous consent to accept the language as shown on the screen. Thank you. We have a unanimous consent request. Bert, Bert. Objection. Okay, we have an objection, so we need a roll call vote. Mr. Chairman, do I need to move that first? Yeah, I need a motion if, yeah, if you want it. Okay, yeah, Mr. Chairman, for a motion. Thank you. I move that we uh, accept the language as shown on the screen. Okay, we have a motion to accept the language as shown on the screen. Do we have a second? Second, Representative Raybould, thank you. We have a motion to second. Either of you would like to speak further to, uh, would, it, would you like to speak to your objection? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I'll be voting against the language. There is a significant dif difference in language uh, as compared to our original motion for this budget, and that's the reason for my objection, so my opportunity to vote nay. Uh, thank you. Uh, did you want to clarify any further or is that sufficient? That's sufficient. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and have a vote on this language with this substitute motion. Okay. okay. Thank you. Oh, we have a question from the floor. Go ahead, uh, Vice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
I, I don't understand the difference in language. Would you help me understand that, Senator? Senator uh, Herndon, you've had a request to uh, help us understand the difference in the language. Go ahead, please. Chairman, I'll ask the motion maker to go ahead and explain the difference in the language. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I might defer to the analyst if I could pass the ball again. <laughs> okay. The ball is jumping around from side to side. Uh, Ms. Lippitt, do you want to help us understand the difference in the languages? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's certainly. the difference between the original motion and the substitute motion. If I understand, the substitute motion is your motion, Representative Petsky, correct? Correct. Okay. So the substitute motion includes uh, the reappropriation language and the accountability reports language that were included in that original maintenance budget that was passed. Uh, the original motion also includes this second section of language um, that provides restrictions on how the office can expend resilient grid grants and requires um, them to report out on, on how those grants are distributed. Okay, Ms. Lippitt, thank you. Is that helpful? Representative Miller, do you want further? Go ahead, whatever you'd like. Okay, then it is the, the original motion that has the reappropriation authority. Ms. Lippitt? Uh, Mr. Chair and Representative Miller, no. The, um, the, original lang the original motion does not include the reappropriation language because that language was previously acted on by this body. So the, I think that the right way to handle this is to make these two decisions um, sequentially and separately. So first, making a decision on the reappropriation and the accountability reports language, um, and, and then the committee might wish to consider the language that had been proposed as a part of the original motion. Thank you, Ms. Lippitt. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bybee, would you like to add to that? Mr. Chairman, I apologize. The, the motion was to include both sections of language on the screen. I don't know why we're uh, uh, trying to separate them at this point. That was the motion. And so, as I understand it, reappropriation was not included in the action taken on January the 16th. Uh, only the standard language regarding resiliency grant. And so this would provide reappropriation authority. Now, uh, when we're going through that standard language for the action taken on the 16th, uh, many uh, motion make, oh, excuse me, many of the analysts as we're going through the sections of language that have been approved in the bill before, as you remember, um, we didn't include reappropriation authority uh, in some sections because we knew that there was additional action to be taken by the committee and it could be added into the bill at this time. And so that is the difference between the two sections as I understand it. Thank you, may I? Go ahead, Senator Hurd, do you have a question? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm just gonna go ahead and ask for clarification then. We have two packets for this office and there were two sets of languages and so it sounds to me like all we need to do is we would approve the first set of language, which was Representative Petsky's motion, and then we would, could ask unanimous consent to include the additional language that was in packet A, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Chairman Groh and Senator Herndon, yes, that's correct. Hey, Mr. Bybee, let me ask a question, if I may. Sure. So uh, relative to the budgets passed on January 16th versus what we're doing now, uh, help us understand uh, does what we're does this language in any way alter those maintenance budgets that were passed in January? Mr. Chairman, no, it does not. It would replicate the language that was the motion passed in January sixteenth. So we need this language if, under either scenario. Is that correct or no? Mr. Chairman, correct. Yeah, either, either scenario works. Senator Herndon, you good with that? So for clarification, then, on packet A, which had the resilient grid grants and the energy resilient subgrant reporting sections, that language, we still do need that as well? Mr. Chairman and, and Mr. Senator Mr. Bybee, go ahead. members of the committee, that would be in a separate motion. This, this first motion was only for these first two sections of language. Okay. 
I think we've got to figure it out. Is that Ms. okay? Yes, Senator Mr. Hearn, Chairman. So we have a, a motion on the floor, so I'd like to make a substitute motion. And that would be to accept the language as shown in packet B for the reappropriation and accountability reports and the language in packet A for resilient grid grants and energy resiliency subgrant reporting so that there would be four sections of language. Ms. Lippitt, does, does that get us everything we need? Mr. Bybee, does that solve our problem? Uh, Mr. Bybee's going to chime uh, in here. Mr. Chairman, um, I, I, I think you closed the motion and asked for a vote first, so I think that you can take that up as a subsequent motion. That was my thinking as well, so <laughs> thank you. Okay, so we have a request, a unanimous consent request. We had an objection. Are you withdrawing your objection? Okay. S say it, please. Senator Herndon is? It's too late to withdraw my objection, so we'll have to go we'll forward to with the vote okay. on the motion, and then I'll make another okay. motion. Thank you. All right. Let's go ahead and vote on the language <laughs> that was requested by Representative Pesky. We're waiting for it to come on the screen. If We're not just sitting here idly. We're waiting. Okay, we need a little help here. Go ahead, Mr. Bybee. Uh, yeah, well, he would like to go at ease. We'll be at ease for a couple of seconds here. We're at ease. We are back in order. And this is showing as an original motion because we're talking about the language now, but it's tied to the substitute motion, correct? Yeah, everybody understand what we're voting on? Yeah, let's go ahead then. Uh, Ms. Figueredo, please, call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and for your patience. Senator Groh. Aye. Bierke. Burton Shaw. Aye. Lent. Aye. Cook. Aye. Van Orden. Adams. Aye. Herndon. Aye. Ward Engel King. Aye. Just. Aye. Representative Miller. Aye. Bundy. Aye. Raybold. Aye. Furness. Aye. Lambert. Aye. Tanner. Aye. Petsky. Aye. Handy. Aye. Green. Aye. Okay, let me clarify. We're voting on language that was included basically in either one if i'm correct and so did i is there a question mr chairman i'd like to change my vote yeah feel free so uh senator bierke is going to change from a nay to an i so we have for the senate 10 eyes zero nays zero absent and excused for the house nine eyes zero nays one absent and excused for a grand total of 19 eyes zero nays one absent and excused therefore the uh, majority having voted in the affirmative, the language shown on the screen passes and will go forward. And now we're open to add additional language. Senator Herndon, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do request unanimous consent to accept the language as shown on the screen, and that would be from packet A for the Office of Energy and Mineral Resources. Okay, so we're just looking at the lower half that's showing on the screen. Is that correct, just the lower half or the whole page, Senator Herndon? What's your that motion? looks like the correct language, Mr. Chairman. Okay, the lower half. All right. Okay. Well, making sure. Trying to make sure it's all in there. Both, both of those sections, Mr. Both Chairman. Both of those sections. All right. Okay. So we have a unanimous consent request for both of those sections for the language to be added to the other language to go along with the bill. Unanimous consent request. Uh, any objections? 
Hearing none, that additional language is added to the first language along with the bill. And we'll go forward with the new pass recommendation. Thank you. And uh, thank you for helping us clarify all the language issues. Appreciate that. Let's go ahead, Ms. Lippitt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the Commission on the Arts budget, which can be found on page 6-53 of your legislative budget book. The Commission on the Arts supports artists and um, educational arts activities throughout the state. Okay, that's the uh, comments from Ms. Lippitt. Any questions for our analyst? Hearing none, do we have any motions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I can... okay. thank you, Mr. Right. Chairman. For the Commission on the Arts, beginning with the FY 2025 base, include the following items as part of the JFAC adjusted budget. Remove $2,500 for benefit costs, add $1,300 for inflationary adjustments, remove $9,600 for statewide cost allocation, and add $22,900 for change in employee compensation. Also include $50,000 for National Endowment for the Arts grants and transfer $50,000 in dedicated funds from operating expenditures to trustee and benefit payments for the match. For FY 2025, I move $933,400 from the general fund, $106,300 from dedicated funds, and $1,213,400 from federal funds for a total of $2,253,100 and cap full-time equivalent positions at 10. Mr. Chairman, Thank I, sec you. I second the motion. Thank you, Senator Ward Engelking is a second to that motion. Would you like to speak further to your motion? Okay, do we have any substitute motions? Oh, Senator Bierke. Mr. Chairman, for motion. Motion's in order. Mr. Chairman, um, Committee for the Commission on the Arts, beginning with fiscal year 2025 JFAC maintenance budget, add 15,400 for the additional 2% CEC and add 50,000 for National Endowment for the Arts Grants. I move an additional 7,200 from the general fund and 58,200 from the federal funds for a total of 65,400. This brings the total fiscal year 2025 appropriation for the Commission on the Arts to 933,400 from the general fund, 106,300 from dedicated funds, and 1,213,400 from the federal funds for a total of 2,253,100 in a cap of 10 full-time equivalent positions. Thank you, Senator Bjerke. We have a motion, a substitute motion. Do we have a second to that? Second. Second by Representative Miller. Thank you. Either of you like to speak further to your motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, just uh, further discussion here. This Go motion ahead. provides. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This motion provides the remaining 2% CEC needed as a result of the committee's action on CEC on February 1st. Line item one provides a $50,000 increase for the National Endowment for the Arts Grants. 50,000 in existing dedicated appropriation will be used as the state's one-to-one -one match. Thank you. I'm looking at the screen and trying to understand this substitute motion. Uh, do we have everything up there, Ms. Lippitt? Uh, Mr. Chairman, are you referring to the motion itself or to the ballot? I'm, I'm looking at the uh, substitute motion that's here on the screen with Bjerke and Miller. Shows a total of sixty-five thousand dollars. Is that is that the motion? And yet, and the other one's two million. Yes, that's correct. So the substitute motion provides the difference between the fiscal year 2025 total line and then what this committee had previously acted on. Got it. Okay. I just want to make sure we're all clear what we're, what we're voting on there. All right. We have the uh, substitute motion. Do we have any alternates to the substitute motion? Not seeing any. Let's go ahead. And when you're ready, Ms. Figueredo, you could call the roll for us. 
This is on the substitute motion. Okay. Senator Groh? Aye. Bierke? Aye. Burton Shaw? Aye. Lent? Aye. Cook? Van Orden? Aye. Adams? Aye. Herndon? Aye. Ward Ingle King? Aye. Just? Aye. Representative Miller? Aye. Bundy? Raybold, Furness, Lambert, Aye. Tanner, Aye. Petsky, Aye. Handy, Aye. Green. Thank you for your votes. Would anyone like to change his or her vote? Hearing none, we have for the substitute motion for the Senate, we have a total of four ayes, six nays, zero absent and excused. For the House, three ayes, six nays. One absent and excused for a grand total of seven ayes, 12 nays, one absent and excused. Uh, therefore, uh, the majority having, having a voted against this substitute motion, this motion fails, and we now back up to the original motion. Senator Groh? Nay. Bierke? Nay. Burton Shaw? Aye. Lent? Aye. Cook? Van Orden, Aye. Adams, Aye. Herndon, Aye. Ward Ingle King, Aye. Just, Aye. Representative Miller, Aye. Bundy, Aye. Raybold, Aye. Furness, Aye. Lambert, Aye. Tanner, Petsky, Handy, Aye. Green. Thank you for your votes. We have uh, on the original motion, we have six ayes, four nays, zero absent and excused. And for the House, we have six ayes, three nays, one absent and excused for a grand total of 12 ayes, seven nays, one absent and excused. Therefore, the majority having voted in the affirmative, this motion, the original motion, goes forward to the floor with a due pass recommendation. Do we have language? Mr. Chairman, yes, we do. Hold, please. Please proceed. We'll look at that on the screen, and then we'll take a motion when somebody's ready to give us one. Mr. Chairman, uh, this section of the language provides for the accountability reports. Thank you, Ms. Libet. Do we have a motion on the language on the screen? Representative Petsky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I request unanimous consent to accept the language as shown on the screen. We have unanimous consent request. Do we have any objections? Hearing none, that language is accepted and we'll go forward with the bill and all of it being one package with a due pass recommendation. Thank you. Public Utilities Commission next, right? Ms. Lippitt, go ahead, please. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Public Utilities Commission regulates investor-owned utilities within the state as well as railroads and pipelines and can be found on page 5-55 of your legislative budget book. Thank you. Any Questions for our analyst. Hearing none, let's go ahead with any motions we may have on public utilities. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I hear a voice from the far. Who is it? Over here. Bierke. <laughs> Thank you. Senator Bierke, go ahead, please. For a motion. Uh, Motion's in order. Mr. Chairman, for the Public Utilities Commission, beginning with the fiscal year 2025 JFAC maintenance budget at 87200 for the additional 2% CEC and 69,600 for replacement items. I move an additional 153,600 from dedicated funds and 3,200 from federal funds for a total of 156,800. This brings the total fiscal year 2025 appropriation for the Public Utilities Commission to 7,104,800 from dedicated funds and 375,100 from federal funds. 
for a total of seven million four hundred and seventy nine thousand nine hundred and a cap of forty eight full time equivalent positions. Thank you. We have a motion from Senator Bjorki. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Representative Miller. Either of you like to speak to the motion? Nope. Okay. Uh, so we have a, that motion. Do we have any substitute motions? Mr. Chairman. Senator Cook, go ahead. Thank you. Um, for the Public Utilities Commission, beginning with fiscal year 2025 base, remove $12,500 for personal benefit costs, add $69,600 for replacement items, add $182,700 for statewide cost allocation, and add $130,100 for CEC. For fiscal year 2025, I move $7,104,800 from dedicated funds and $375,100 from federal funds for a total of $7,479,900 and a cap of 48 full-time equivalent positions. Thanks, Senator Cook. We have a motion from him. Do we have a second? Second from Representative Petsky. Either of you like to speak further to your motion? I would please, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this motion represents a complete maintenance budget for fiscal year 25 based on the definition provided in the budget development manual developed under the requirements of chapter 35, title 67, Idaho code that outlines the state budget process. This definition reflects the adjustments needed to maintain the current state of operations and level of service for each program, which includes the committee's recommended 3% CEC for permanent employees. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Cook. We appreciate your comments. Uh, any further questions or comments on that? So this is a substitute motion now that's going up. And when it gets on the screen, we will have a vote called by Ms. Figueredo. <clears throat> Senator Grow. Uh, waiting to see it. OK, there you go. Uh, nay. Bierke. Nay. Burton Shaw. Aye. Lent. Aye. Cook. Aye. Van Orden. Aye. Adams. Nay. Herndon. Nay. Ward Engel King. Aye. Just. Aye. Representative Miller. Nay. Bundy. Aye. Raybold. Aye. Furness. Lambert, Aye. Tanner, Aye. Petsky, Aye. Handy, Aye. Green. Aye. Thank you for your votes. Would anyone like to change his or her vote? Seeing no changes, we have on the substitute motion. For the Senate, we have six ayes, four nays, zero absent and excused. For the House, six ayes, three nays, one absent and excused. A grand total of 12 ayes, seven nays, one absent and excused. Majority having voted in the affirmative, this bill will go forward with a due pass recommendation. Do we have language, Ms. Lippitt? Mr. Chair, yes, we do. Uh, the, oops. Let me get that on the screen for everyone. Uh, the language on the screen provides for the accountability reports. Okay, we have language on the screen. Do we have a motion? Go Go ahead. Motion, Mr. Go ahead. Chairman. I re request unanimous consent to accept the language as shown on the screen. Thank you, Senator Cook. We have a unanimous consent request. Any objections? Hearing none. Uh, that request is accepted and will go forward. This language will go forward with the bill to the floor with a due pass recommendation. Thank you, Ms. Lippitt. Do we have anything else there? I see you more things on the screen. Uh, Mr. Chair, those are all my budgets. Those are all your budgets? Yes. Thank you very much for your work. We appreciate that today. Thank you. And then we will move on to Mr. Hibbard.
Please identify yourself for the record when you are ready and proceed. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Tim Hibbard. I'm a budget and policy analyst with Legislative Services. Uh, next up on the agenda, we have the uh, the budget for the Board of Tax Appeals, which can be found on page 6-179 of the Legislative Budget Book. The Board of Tax Appeals provides taxpayers the opportunity to appeal their ad valorem assessed valuations from a county board of equalization or tax, or tax decisions from the Idaho State Tax Commission. The three-member board provides an opportunity for appellants and respondents to present testimony and evidence as a quasi-judicial board hearing rather than through a district court trial, which can necessitate legal representation and expense. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I conclude my remarks. Thank you, Mr. Hibbard. Any questions for our analyst? Hearing none, do you have any motions? Herndon. Yes, Mr. Chairman, for a motion. Motion's in order. For the Board of Tax Appeals, beginning with the fiscal year 2025 JFAC maintenance budget, add $7,200 for the 2% CEC, add $4,400 for replacement items. I move an additional $11,600 from the general fund. This brings the fiscal year 2025 appropriation for the Board of Tax Appeals to $656,000 from the general fund and cap full-time equivalent positions at four. Thank you, we have a uh, motion from Senator Herndon. Do we have a second? Second by Senator Bjorki. Either of you like to speak further to the motion? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, just to say that the board member per diem that was in the agency and governor's request does require a policy bill to pass both the House and Senate before action by this committee can be taken. Thank you for that clarification. Any further comments? Hearing none, do we have an alternate or substitute motion? For a motion. Motion's in order. Thank you, Representative Furness. Go ahead. <clears throat> for the Board of Tax Appeals, beginning with FY 2025 base, include the following items as part of the JFAC maintenance budget. Reduce 1000 for benefit costs. Add $1,400 for inflationary adjustments. Add $4,400 for replacement items. Reduce $14,800 for statewide cost allocation. And add $10,800 for change in employee compensation. For FY 2025, I move $656,000 from the general fund and cap full-time equivalent positions at four. Thank you. Representative Furness has given us a motion for a substitute. Motion. Do we have a second? Second by Senator Cook. Would either of you like to speak further to the motion? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. Let's uh, go ahead. So now we have, do we have an alternate substitute motion? Hearing none, let's go ahead with a vote on the substitute motion then. When you're, when it's on the screen, go ahead and call the roll, please. <clears throat> Senator Grow. Nay. Bierke, Burton Shaw, Lent, Cook, Van Orden, Adams, Herndon, Ward Engel King, Just, Representative Miller, Nay, Bundy, Raybold, Furness, Lambert, Tanner, Petsky, Handy. Green. Thank you. Would anyone like to change his or her vote? Hearing no changes uh, on the substitute motion, we have six ayes for the Senate, four nays, zero absent and excused, and for the House, six ayes, three nays, one absent and excused. For a grand total of 12 ayes, seven nays, one absent and excused. Therefore, with the majority voting in the affirmative, this substitute motion has passed and will go forward with a due pass recommendation. Do we have language, Mr. Hibbard? Yes, Mr. Chairman, this is the standard accountability reports language uh, that you've seen in, in the other budgets. We'll wait and see it on the screen, make sure everybody likes it. Okay, there's your language. 
We have a motion on language. Representative Furness. Thank you. I request unanimous consent to accept the language as shown on the screen. We have a unanimous consent request. Any objections? Hearing none. The language will be accepted and move forward along with the bill. Thank you. Mr. Hibbard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, next up on the agenda, we have the State Tax Commission. Um, the State Tax Commission has five budgeted programs, general services, audit, compliance, revenue operations, and property uh, tax, and provides a variety of services to uh, help Idaho taxpayers uh, pay and comply with their, their taxes. Um, and if there are any questions, I am here. Thank you, Mr. Hibbert. Any questions for our analyst? Hearing none, do we have any motions? Mr. Chairman. Representative Petsky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the Idaho State Tax Commission, beginning with the FY 2025 base, include the following items as part of the JFAC maintenance budget. Reduce $154,100 for benefit costs, add $187,000 for inflationary adjustments, add $363,100 for replacement items, reduce $687,400 for statewide cost allocation, Add $968,600 for change in employee compensation. Add $383,100 for OITS equipment modernization. And include a net zero program transfer for a technology and innovation bureau. For FY 2025, I move $44,237,800 from the general fund. And $9,272,700 from dedicated funds. For a total of $53,510,500 and cap full-time equivalent positions at 440. Thank you, we have a motion from Representative Petsky. Do we have a second? Second by Senator Cook. Uh, either of you like to speak further to your motion? Uh, briefly, Mr. Chairman, I would just add that similar to the last budget that we saw, the commissioner CEC is dependent upon a policy bill and so we will have to take that up if that policy bill passes. Thank you for that clarification. Any other comments? Hearing none, do we have a substitute motion? Mr. Chairman, for a substitute motion. Senator Bjorki, substitute motion. Mr. Chairman, um, let's hold off on that. So you just, okay. I'll take that back. Okay, he's taking that back. So uh, what we do have is the motion. Make sure. Motion you're... for maintenance budget. Do you want to do it? Um, whatever you think. Go ahead if you want. Okay, let's don't do it then. <laughs> okay, all right. Hearing no, no substitute motions, let's go ahead with a vote on the original motion when you have it up on the screen, please. Senator Gro. Nay. Yerke. Nay. Burton Shaw. Aye. Lent. Aye. Cook. Van Orden, Adams, Herndon. Oh, sorry. Um, excuse me. Ward Ingle King. Aye. Just. Representative Miller. Nay. Bundy. Raybold. Furness, Lambert, Aye. Tanner, Petsky, Handy, Aye. Green. Aye. We have to call our names again. Senator Herndon. We have to vote, folks. Representative Tanner. Okay, everyone having voted, we have on the original and only motion, we have uh, for the Senate, six ayes, four nays, zero absent and excused for the House. Six ayes, three nays, one absent and excused for a grand total of 12 ayes, seven nays, one absent and excused. Therefore, majority having voted in the affirmative, this passes with a due pass recommendation. It will go forward to the floor. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, Can sorry. we get some clarification, please, as to what that motion was that was just voted in favor? 
Thank you. Uh, clarification by whom would like to clarify the motion? I guess I'll ask, do you have a specific question or concern on it? Uh, yes, I would just like the motion read back to us, please. Thank you. Okay. Could we read the motion back to us, please? Sure, Mr. Chairman. For the Idaho State Tax Commission, beginning with the FY 2025 base, include the following items as part of the JFAC maintenance budget. Reduce $154,100 for benefit costs. Add $187,000 for inflationary adjustments. Add $363,100 for replacement items, reduce $687,400 for a statewide cost allocation, and $968,600 for change in employee compensation. Add $383,100 for OITS equipment modernization, and include a net zero program transfer for a technology and innovation bureau. For FY 2025, I move $44,237,800 from the general fund and $9,272,700 from dedicated funds for a total of $53,510,500 and cap full-time equivalent positions at 440. Thank you. It's been read back. Are we clear? But was it not read correctly the first time? Was that your concern? I did have a question as to whether it was read correctly the first time. Thank you. That's the confusion. And thank you for that. Anytime anybody questions whether it's read correctly, please let us know and we'll make sure we get it right. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bybee, we okay not to vote again? Are we all right? There was a question whether or not Mr. Chairman, the vote has already occurred. Okay. Um, I, 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 I didn't hear if there was an incorrect number read, and I'll look to Tim to make sure that the numbers were read correctly. Okay. Got the head nod from Mr. Hibbard. Numbers were read collect correctly. The vote was already taken. So. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the clarification. All right. Uh, Ms. Let's see. So do we have uh, language there? Do we have a motion on the language? Mr. Chairman. Representative Pesky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would request unanimous consent to accept the language as shown on the screen. Thank you. We have a unanimous consent request to accept the language as shown on the screen. Any objections? Hearing none. Language is accepted. We'll go along with the bill. Thank you. Next, Mr. Hibbard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The last item I have for you <clears throat> this morning is the, the budget for the Division of Financial Management. Um, the mission of the Division of Financial Management is to support the governor's vision of a short and long-term uh, policy through effective resource allocation. DFM seeks to improve agency service delivery at the point of citizen impact by developing, monitoring, and publicizing performance outcomes, facilitating the development of the executive budget recommendation, and providing a proactive policy resource for the governor to shape Idaho's future. And um, with that, the, the budget is before you. Thank you, Mr. Hibbard. Do we have a motion on the tax commission, right? Or Division of Financial Division Management. Division of Financial Chairman. Management. That's the right one here. Okay, Division of Financial Management. Do we have a motion by anybody? Mr. Chairman, for a motion. Motion's in order, Senator Lent. Thank you. For the Division of Financial Management, beginning with the FY 2025 base, Include the following items as part of uh, the JFAC maintenance budget, a reduction of $3,200 from, from benefit costs and $32,500 from statewide cost allocation and $67,400 for change in employee compensation. For FY 2025, I move $2,228,200 from the general fund, $936,800 from dedicated funds, and $41,677,100 from federal funds for a total of $44,842,100 and cap full-time equivalent positions at 22. Thank you. We have a motion from Senator Lent. Do we have a second? Second from Representative Petsky. Uh, would either of you like to speak, speak further to your motion? No? Okay. Uh, do we have any alternate motions? 
for a motion. Motion's in order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the Division of Financial Management, beginning with the fiscal year 2025 JFAC maintenance budget, add $45,800 for the 2% CEC. I move an additional $33,200 from the general fund, $10,400 from dedicated funds, and $2,200, that's $2,200 from federal funds for a total of $45,800. This brings the fiscal year 2025 appropriation for the Division of Financial Management to $2,228,200 from the general fund. $936,800 from dedicated funds, $41,677,100 from federal funds for a total of $44,842,100 and cap full-time equivalent positions at 22. Thank you. We have a motion by Representative Miller. Do we hear a second? Second. Second by Senator Bjorki. Would either of you like to speak further to the motion? No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, hearing no further. Do we have any alternate substitute, substitute motions? Hearing none, let's go ahead and vote on the substitute motion. Ms. Figueredo, when you are ready, go ahead and call the roll, please. Senator Groh? Aye. Bierke? Aye. Burtonshaw? Nay. Lent? Nay. Cook? Nay. Van Orden? Adams. Aye. Herndon. Aye. Ward Ingle King. Aye. Just. Aye. Representative Miller. Aye. Bundy. Raybold. Aye. Furness. Aye. Lambert. Aye. Tanner. Aye. Petsky. Aye. Handy. Green. Thank you. Would anyone like to change his or her vote? There are no changes. On the substitute motion, we have for the Senate four ayes, six nays, zero absent and excused. For the House, three ayes, six nays, one absent and excused. For a grand total of seven ayes, 12 nays, one absent and excused. The uh, failing a majority vote, uh, this motion fails. Let me go back to the original motion. When you're ready, please call the roll. Senator Groh. Nay. Bierke. Nay. Burton Shaw. Aye. Lent. Aye. Cook. Aye. Van Orden. Aye. Adams. Nay. Herndon. Nay. Wardingo King. Aye. Just. Aye. Representative Miller. Nay. Bundy. Aye. Raybold. Aye. Furness. Lambert. Aye. Tanner. Petsky, Aye. Handy, Aye. Green. Aye. Thank you for your votes. On the original motion, we have for the Senate, six ayes, four nays, zero absent and excused. For the House, six ayes, three nays, one absent and excused. For a grand total of 12 ayes, seven nays, one absent and excused. The majority having voted in the affirmative. Therefore, this original motion passes and will go forward to the floors with the due pass recommendation. Do we have language? Yes, Mr. Chairman, we have standard accountability uh, report language. Let's see that on the screen when you're ready. There you go. Okay. Here is our accountability report standard language. Do we have any motion? Mr. Chairman. From, I heard that voice, Senator Lind. I request unanimous consent that we accept the language as written on the screen. We have a unanimous consent request from Senator Lind. Any objections? Hearing none. Uh, that language is accepted and will go forward with the bill along with the due pass recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Hibbard, is that it for you? Yes, Mr. Chairman, that is it for me. Thank you, Mr. Hibbard. Appreciate your work today. Mr. Bybee, please identify yourself for the record and proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, would you mind going at ease so I can hand out sure. my uh, attachment? I didn't have my act together this morning. I apologize. I no I problem. Pages help me. We will be at ease. Pages, please help hand that out. Thank you. We're at ease.
Okay. We're back in order. Mr. Bybee, please proceed. Uh, identify yourself for the record and proceed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Keith Bybee, I'm the Division Manager of Budget and Policy Analysis. Okay, hang on just a minute. Uh, Got to give everybody time to get seated here. We lost a couple in the way, it looks like. Okay, go ahead, please, again. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm the division, Ma uh, Keith Bybee. I'm the division manager of budget and policy analysis. Um, last action item for the committee this morning is to correct an error that occurred on uh, the, the committee action from January the 16th. Uh, I should have caught this, uh, uh, being it's for the legislative branch, uh, but the, the legislative branch actually does not have a full time equivalent position cap and the error that uh, that I made was included in the motion sheets and I apologize for that but uh, this would require uh, either just uh, making a motion to remove that FTP cap or reopening the budget uh, depending upon where we're at I wrote this a while ago so operating under uh, committee rules and and how that is interpreted from the chairman on how you'd like to proceed there okay so let me just clarify so you need a motion to uh, change the cap on the legislative group. Correct. Okay. For a motion. Okay, this technical correction, go ahead. I request uh, unanimous consent to reopen the 2025 maintenance appropriation to the legislative branch. Okay, we have unanimous consent request. Anyone, any objections? If not, let's, uh, we've accepted that. What's the next motion? Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I request to remove the full-time equivalent position cap for the legislative branch. Okay, we have a motion. I guess we need a second on, on a second by Senator Bjerke to re remove the full-time equivalent position cap for le legislative branch. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, let's go ahead and have a vote and give Ms. Figueredo time to pull that up. <laughs> when you're ready, Mr. Grado, you can go ahead and call the roll. Senator Gro. Aye. Bierke. Burton Shaw. Aye. Lent. Cook. Aye. Van Orden. Adams. Herndon. Aye. Ward Engelking. Aye. Just. Representative Miller. Aye. Bundy. Raybold. Furness. Lambert. Tanner. Petsky. Andy. Green. Thank you. Would anyone like to change his or her vote? Hearing no changes, we have for the Senate uh, nine ayes, zero nays, one absent, and excused. For the House, eight ayes, zero nays, two absent, and excused. For grand total, 17 ayes, zero nays, three absent, and excused. The majority having voted in the affirmative, that uh, motion passes, and we'll go to the floor with due pass for a recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Bybee, that concludes our. Uh, oh, you've got a general fund analysis. Did you want to do that today, or should we try another day? What's your. <laughs> I'm completely un unprepared to do that. I apologize. Okay. All right. So we will uh, hold that. We appreciate the update that Mr. Bybee gives us every few days so we know where we are. And that deals with policy bills that are floating around on the floor that will affect our budget. And so we need to know what's happening in the germane committees and the floors as well as what we're doing in here. So thank you, Mr. Bybee, for that. With that, uh, we will stand adjourned until 8 o'clock Monday morning. See you then.